hi there last time we've seen each other we were in Muna, the beautiful city of tea plantations and now we are in kochi here in kerala one of the bigger cities i'm so excited to explore the city and this video will focus on the questions is it worth a visit and what is there to do in 24 hours Hi, if we don't know each other yet, I'm Rita and at the moment I'm traveling through the beautiful country of India, exploring sites, cities and sharing all my impressions and best recommendations here with you. Good morning! We are starting the day nice and early in Jew Town, which is right here in Manta Cherry Street, which is not too far from Fort Kochi. Everything is very close to each other. Jew Town, as the name suggests, was a place or is a place where a lot of Jews used to live or are still living to this day. And there are a lot of antique shops, literally one after the other. And I've read online that some of the things sold in the shops here are actually things left behind by people that left this place and moved to other places eventually. Also, there are a lot of restaurants here. So overall, it's kind of a place which is combination of shopping and eating yummy things. I have never seen antique shops with so many things in them. In fact, we found a shop with 42 rooms. It's huge and the things here are beautiful and for sale. I wish I had a massive luggage and I could take everything. It's so unique. Getting lost here is not only a possibility, but actually a desirable outcome because you might just find pure beauty. This one, for example, it's pink all around me. I feel like I'm back in Jaipur. Look at the statues. There are a couple of theories of how the first Jews have arrived here to Kochi a long, long time ago. Some say that it was due to the spice trade present here in the city, but also there has been an expulsion of Jews from Spain and Portugal, and people have relocated to other places. Some of it was here in Kochi. But the most important thing is that their culture and their presence and their influence on the city is here in Jutong. I actually found such a cool restaurant. It's called Ginger House and it has the view. Look at that. It's so peaceful and the decorations here are amazing from like restaurant to toilets. I wish I was hungry or like a little bit less full than I am now because this is amazing. As we walk around Jew Town, what we find are lots of shops selling pashmina products, which are known for their fine cashmere wool. It honestly is the softest product that I have come across. Imagine touching a cashmere scarf, but triple that softness. There are lots of shops selling authentic pashmina products, but they are expensive because it's a labor-intensive production process behind them. That also means that unfortunately lots of people try to imitate that product and try to sell you for an expensive product something that is actually not worth it. The interesting thing is that if you wouldn't know it that you're in Jew Town right now, you would have no idea because if you look on the buildings, it just looks like Kochi, very Western, very European, but there's not like a clear presence of this is Jew Town, other than when you see the Magendavids on the buildings here, some of them. Actually, if you go away from the main street and you go towards the synagogue, it will get more and more Jewish on the streets. Now we are in a shop called Sarah Cowan's Home and there are a lot of items here with the Star of David and even King Charles was here and met her in person. So she was a very important person, not only here in the city, but in all of India. Sarah Cohen was the oldest member of Kochi's Jewish community. Her home and shop were significant cultural sites reflecting the rich heritage of the Jewish community in Kochi and that exact home is now preserving the memory of Jewish culture in the region. We are visiting now Sarah Cohen's old room which will eventually be a museum. Look at that! This man right here was a good friend of Sarah and is now not only continuing with her legacy through the embroidery shop, but has more ideas on top of that, that might involve a museum. I know that I'm Muslim, but I'm keeping it in the very careful and, and, and memories. Uh, otherwise, Sarah is passed away, somebody is going this maybe I give them to the Yes. Place. I'll not throw it and keep it in the memory. Amazing. That we are there. Is in there, all the cupboard is there. there. This is a Sarani making the special and a mirror. And see that you see to the three yeah. face, you can see the picture and the three <laughs> ankle. You can see it okay now. Amazing. More memories. I will lay it okay. Let's see. Okay. Wow, so this is where she used to sit to her makeup. That's I can so see it okay. for a Oh, nice. <laughs> I, I show that photo as yes, okay only, 
This tour was really one of my highlights here in Kochi. It was a private tour. That's the old kitchen complex. We saw her bedroom, her bathroom, and he is so passionate about her history and her legacy and has so many ideas to make this place a really nice museum slash restaurant complex. It's so cool. The next side of the day was not too far away either, just towards the end of the same road. Paradesi Synagogue, one of the attractions in Kochi <laughs> and the Jun town, and it was built 1568, like it's so old. And I love that we can see it from inside now, I'm so excited. Wow. I just entered the synagogue, it's so impressively beautiful. There are chandeliers hanging, so many of them, and it's just beautiful. It's really impressive to be in such an old synagogue where you can enter as a tourist. There is an information board here about the synagogue and it is impressive. It says that the synagogue is 450 years old and is actually the oldest one in the Commonwealth. It was built in 1568, can you imagine that? And was for the flourishing Jewish community here in Kochi, which at its best time comprised 2,000 people. And you have to imagine like these people living here in Jewtown coming together in the synagogue for celebrations, for prayers, like what a festive event and what a culture it was here. And also like it was designed with the Sephardic Jewish style in mind, the synagogue style, but the flooring is actually from China and was hand drawn with a vegetable dye. It is such a beautiful place. I feel like history is here and we can touch it and see it with our own eyes. When you visit the synagogue, there is right next to it a coffee house called Coffee Jew Town with snacks, coffee and drinks. And I'm, I need a coffee and I need some piece of cake, some sugar, something. Jewtown is quite compact, but also filled with so much life. Cute little restaurants, coffee shops and boutique stores. The perfect place to browse around. What I would also suggest you to do is kind of just walk a little bit outside of the main touristic street here in Jewtown and make a circle through the small city part here. You will see local houses, people living and doing their daily things. It is very interesting and everyone is so friendly and like smiley, saying hello. I love it. It feels like such a friendly neighborhood to be in. I'm kind of still not quite used to the sight of seeing a goat on the street just living his best life and snacking on something. And as I was walking, I came across something very unique. These women were filtering through some black pepper and you could definitely smell that spice in the air. It was spicy. Lucky for me, they even let me help them out for a little bit. Oh. <laughs> 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 Spending the morning in Jewtown has been so fun, but now it's time to explore other parts of Kochi. So let's jump on a tuk tuk and let's go. One of the sites here in Kochi is the Santa Cruz Cathedral Basilica, and I'm standing right in front of it now. I've read online that the true beauty of it is the immensely beautiful exterior and then the gothic looking interior so i haven't entered yet let's see how it looks inside and it is considered one of india's most beautiful churches and there is a reason for it the level of detail here is insane just walking through it you feel like you're completely somewhere else it's very, very impressive and one of the top sites in Kochi. In fact, it was built in the 1500s and it was sadly deconstructed, demolished, something happened to it and then it was reconstructed in the 1800s. So I'm not sure what the original design looked like and if it was the same, but if it was like this, then it would be mind-blowing. Imagine this in the 1500s. Some of the beauty of this site actually lies in the contrast between the interior and the exterior. The interior is very gothic and the exterior is 
hugely glamorous kind of you see it from far and you want to enter this place and I guess this was part of the reason why they made it this way but Kochi has not only one famous church there is another one next up in Fort Kochi we have the San Francis Church which is not only one of India's oldest churches but it is also kind of a standing witness of all the change that has been happening here throughout the centuries in Kochi it was built in the 1500s and I'm excited to go inside and see how it looks I think that this church is, compared to the Santa Cruz Basilica, very subtle in its design. But I kind of like it because it gives you the opportunity to touch 1500th century architecture with your own feet and walk in this church and kind of get a little sense of history and how it was like back then to go to church. Now it is 4 p.m. We haven't had lunch and just a piece of cake in the cafe in Jewtown. Now it's time for lunch. We are here in Fort Kochi going to a vegetarian restaurant. I'm so hungry. We have some fried cauliflower here, then a dal, look at that creaminess, and plain rice with a spice that I'm not sure I know, but it was on the menu, so I'm excited to try it. Cheers, refreshing. Quite full, it's time to head on to the next sightseeing spot, which is a smaller one. It's actually a cemetery, and that is quite of a random one, I would say, but it is a Dutch cemetery, and it has been here since colonial times. More than 100 very important people have been laid to rest here. And the impressive thing about the cemetery is that it is India's oldest European cemetery and the design is Dutch influenced. It is usually closed so you can't actually enter it but you can have a glimpse from the outside. And after this spot one thing is needed urgently at this point. Coffee time! Let's see what we're gonna get. Very caffeinated, it was time to do a must-do activity here in Kochi. Can you guess what it is? If you're looking for a cool and very interesting evening activity, I can recommend you the Kathakali show. And Kathakali is basically a way of Indian storytelling without using words, but just relying on your facial expressions as well as expressions with your hands. And the actors, they wear very heavy costumes as well as heavy face makeup. And that makes it very, very unique. But one thing that I would recommend you to do, or for me at least, it would have been nice to have it, were earplugs. It gets very loud. This is a small stage and room. And for me, it was just a little bit too loud. And had I brought some earplugs with me, I would have enjoyed it way more. <laughs> most sense to go to the beach promenade and the calm night market there or the princess street which is packed with restaurants and bars and is nearby but since we already spent one evening at fort kochi we decided to come to the marine drive as online it said that there's supposed to be some nightlife happening here but unfortunately so far we haven't found it there are some restaurants here and there and a little bit of music sometimes but overall i wouldn't recommend to come here there is not really much happening here the marine drive hasn't worked, but that doesn't mean the evening is over. So we are heading to the next destination. And we have come now to the Queen's walkway, which has some lights and music. So let's see how it is there. However, the lights have been a bit of an illusion, you could say, and there was just a smaller concert happening. To be honest, it could be that this was just not the right evening for this place. It seems that it is alive on different days. So far, the Queen's Gateway has not been a success again, so we opted for a different solution. Ice cream and we're just gonna walk around the walkway here. Although we didn't manage to find potentially a beach promenade that is more alive or like a place with some music, but we saw the more local way of spending a Friday evening or what we think it might be. And for me, that is all worth it because this is a little window into the world of the people that live here in Kochi. And for me, it is really the most, the biggest highlight, more than, so much more than just a bar of music. 
And with that, the most perfect full sightseeing day in Kochi is coming to an end. Is it worth it to visit Kochi? Absolutely. I think it is a hidden gem in the south of India and I'm so happy I had a chance to explore it. With Kochi, my time in India is coming to an end for now, but I've had the most memorable and positive travel experience on my first journey through this beautiful country. Check out my other videos of India to see more and don't forget to hit that like button to support me and so that other people can find this video as well. And I will see you in my next adventures.